I am now live with the Salmonetti Source, the Salmonetti Source sponsored by Stop It Underwear, available on <laughs> teespring.com. <laughs> oh, man, you're crazy. Hey, the Salmonetti Source, we all know you were a big Corbin fan. If you ask me, you're the one that started it all. Even with uh, Gary Cole, you put that idea out. Obviously, you gained traction. We saw the Astros make a trade for Cole. You could say the same thing happened with Corbin. Nobody, it, Corbin wasn't even on anybody's radar. You're the one that practically made him famous. Yeah, I mean, going back to the end of 2017, when I talked about the Yankees looking to deal for Corbin, of course, about a couple of weeks after that, that comes out with... Um, Joel Sherman of the New York Post reporting that they tried to trade for Corbin and were told no. The Yankees have liked him for a very long time. I reported that, you know, obviously uh, more accurately than, than than anybody out there, which is, I think, very fair to say. But at the end of the day, you know, it would have came full circle if they got him. I would have been happy. I could never go against my word and say that the Yankees weren't going to get him. I mean, hell, Jack Curry was on the Yes Network yesterday on the Hot Stove Show and flat out said he thinks he's the guy the Yankees get no doubt about it I mean it, and it, it was coming well let's it was point out thing. yeah yeah let's point out the hypocrisy Jack Curry said the same thing but you're the one getting heat and these mainstream media guys no disrespect to Jack Curry does great work you're the <laughs> one getting heat for it but all these mainstream media guys have said the same thing nobody's well, giving them heat well what I, what I what I think it is is that people know I'm much more accessible than they are exactly. and I'm I'm working on that. I'm learning that. Plus, I'm these other guys could afford lawyers and stuff like that. They're rich, practically. Of course, and and that's obviously the big difference there. And a lot of them probably, some of them probably really handled their Twitter handle, but some some of them may not. But um, the the crazy thing is, you know, I was looking today, and um, Gary Phillips, former uh, Mets GM, he had a, a thing out there. I forgot who he's who he's working with now, but I mean, anyway, you look when it comes to projections. Corbin was a Yankee. I mean, this is not something that, you know, I just went out there and said. I, I reported they gave a five-year offer. Uh, they say today they gave a five-year offer. Never knew it was $100 million. I mean, you know, I, I showed you it. We talked about it. I, I talked to Brian Hoke today, who is excellent. And Brian Hoke said the same thing I did. I asked him for a reaction. He said flat out, they could not have thought Patrick Corbin would accept five years, $100 million. Exactly. They couldn't have. Let's talk about and, the amount. I think the Yankees just offered him a number, knowing that he would reject it. I think the Yankees are trying to stay on the luxury tax. They see it that um, ten million extra that they're getting this year because of the cap. I think that's enough for them. I'm not agreeing that they should stay under the luxury tax, but that's what I see the Yankees doing. You know, it's it's crazy because, and I'll, I'll talk about this for a little bit here, real quickly. They. The Yankees are the hardest team to judge. They're the hardest team in the planet. Whatever they do, one thing you got to give Brian Cashman credit for, his team around him doesn't leak nothing. They don't leak no information. Every other team, you have an idea of what's going on. You have an idea what the money is. You, you're kind of in the loop there. And I just said it, I think it was on my chat yesterday, to beware for the Nationals. Never thought they would go 6-140. I never thought Corbin would get that money. I thought the Yankees would go 6 you know, I was told they would go six and push harder for them. As many people reported, they didn't do it. Now, what that, what to me, here's the question to me. And we talked about this a lot. We understand what the next moves could be. But is this the same team that we've been used to over years that would go out there and get their number one target? I don't know. I, I don't know that I'm comfortable saying that. I don't know if they're going to pony up the money that it might take to get a Machado or a Harper. I don't know if they're going to make a big move that might get negative publicity in the papers. It seems like they're worried about many things now that they've never been worried about before. Exactly, and in my opinion, the reason why Hal Steinbrenner is staying on the luxury tax is because he worked to stay on the luxury tax, and I cannot see him, after all that work they did, you know, releasing A-Rod, uh, dumping salary here and there, I don't see them reversing that. And I also see that the Steinbrenner family, they all have to take a cut off the revenue. So they're splitting it all, the percentage, within each other. 
So this is another reason why I think they prefer to stay under the luxury tax. It's very, it's very possible. I mean, we're seeing it. We're seeing it for years and years. You know, I put that tweet out there that, I mean, nobody was on Justin Verlander like you were. I mean, hands down. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I mean, to be, I tell people that all the time. You were, you were about as spot on as you get with the miss on Justin Verlander to the point you told me whoever gets him is winning the World Series. Yeah, exactly. And I said, you're nuts. I said, you are nuts. <laughs> There's no way Sonny Gray is not going to perform better than Justin Verlander. And you said, okay, watch. And you are 100% right. That's a miss on Brian Cashner. People bring up, oh, Garrett Cole. They missed on Garrett Cole. And I love when people say, oh, no. And Andrew Hart was the first part of that deal in the beginning of that of that trade negotiations. I had that spot on more than anybody. If people really think Andrew Hart was the reason they didn't get him, look at the trade they took uh, from the Astros. They got garbage and a trash can <laughs> from the Astros. The Yankees would not surrender Clint Frazier and the amazing, amazing love they got for Chance Adams <laughs> to get this guy. A, 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 a guy that looks like he just got off a, a friggin' what's it called? The Amish farm, whatever they do. <laughs> the Amish people. I mean, this is the concern right now for the Yankees. Brian Cashman, yes, you can you can name the trades that have been good. I get it. You can nitpick all you want, and I'm not nitpicking. But for a team like the Yankees to have missed out on so many starters, somebody should answer for that. And if they continue to do that, you know, Paxton's great. I think Paxton, if Paxton's healthy, he's going to be excellent. The Yankees need two elite guys. They need two elite guys on top of that rotation. Exactly. Will they do it? We're going to see. Do they have the opportunity to do it? Yes, they do. Now, are they going to go out and execute? I am not as confident in the Yankees making deals as I was in the past. And it's, now, just, um, it's just this, what it is. Now Chance Adams, his value has diminished. They could have unloaded him, like you said, a season ago. Now the Yankees, now we see the Mets who don't, they don't even have the farm system that the Yankees have, and they're out there making more moves than the Yankees. And they are now in the hunt for JT Riamuto. Oh, seriously in the hunt for him. And, and it's not going to stop there. Look, here's what the Mets are doing. And honestly, I love it. I love it. The Mets are basically saying, we got one chance to win with this core. And it's true. We got a couple of years, maybe two, three tops with, you know, DeGrom, with Mats, with with Noah Syndergaard. We got to go for it. The the deal to get uh, Cano and Diaz, I even said, I said, yeah, they did give up a lot. But if they really feel these are pieces that are uh, seriously going to help their club, which they obviously do feel that way, they're doing what they're supposed to do. They're going out there. They're going to they're gonna push as hard as they can for one or two years. Now, if they don't win in one or two years, they're going to be a pretty shitty team again pretty quickly. But they got a good chance. They got a good chance in that division. Again, of course, the Phillies are going to get better. The Nationals got better today. They probably got the three top three in all of baseball, one, two, three starters in, in Scherzer, Strasburg, and Corbin. I mean, you, you really don't get much, much better than that. So they'll have trouble with that, but the Mets have a, have a very formidable rotation. They're looking to get a little bit of offense, and they, they look to make a run. They're, they're doing what a team should do when they want to win. The Yankees just seem like they've become this team that's <laughs> no longer – it's like they're no longer the shark. And I, like I mentioned, this, yeah, I mentioned this. There's um, blood in the water, and they're not a shark no yeah, more. They don't want to eat. Exactly. I mentioned this um, three weeks ago. I said, "Hey, I expect Hal Steinbrenner to stay on the luxury tax. He's making, putting out signals out that he prefers to stay on the luxury tax." Uh, Yankees fans attacked me. Now they're realizing what I said was true because all the moves the Yankees are making, specifically the Corbin signing, they threw out a number. They knew Corbin wasn't going to accept that. Now the Yankees fans are saying Corbin is trash. He's not worth that. Come on. Yep. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I'm not. I, you know, me, me and you. I, th I think. I think the thing with me and you is that uh, obviously we have a lot more people I, that that obviously like us a lot than than dislike us. You got the few psychos out there, but yeah. it is what it is. But the thing is about new age, and I, and I don't mean this as a negative. There's this new idea with, with Yankee fans. Years ago, we were never like this, and a lot of Yankee fans, I would say, probably what. 
uh, from 2009 and beyond that, or maybe 2010 and beyond that, we knew what the Yankees were. We knew what the Yankees would do. There's this, there's this new age mentality that anything Brian Cashman or the Yankees do, we got to find a scapegoat for it. There's a reason the Yankees didn't do this. Now, if you're hearing this, I'm telling you, man, on my live chats, I heard this all day. I would go to six years, 135. I would go to six years, 125. And now today you hear, oh, well, it was overpay. I mean, let them deal with it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Or this guy had one good year anyway, but yet every one of their mother would, would, would agree with me to say, it's probably the arm the Yankees needed. They needed to go after the big arm. They didn't get them. It's uh, recycled. Million. Yeah, it's recycled. Every, exactly. every picture and they I, miss I mean, out of is the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's always a, a new excuse now. It's We didn't want to give this guy. Hell, look, I reported a couple of weeks ago that the Yankees had a deal in place. They agreed on the first name. And again, for the people out there that don't believe me, it's actually been reported on that it is accurate. So it came out after I said it. You can look it up. It's all there. That the Yankees had agreement on the first player in a deal for one of the Indian starter. Brian Cashman refused to include Esteban Floriel to finish off any type of deal. They were moving just to Sheffield like he was the hottest thing in the planet to try to get rid of him. They obviously eventually got rid of him. But my point here is, my point here is, they, they can still make these deals, but for some reason, there's a, there's a, always a bit of uncertainty, it seems like, of what we're doing. I'm a little confused of where that's coming from. Because again, this is not a team, and, and Yankee fans need to realize this. You realize, you realize this, I realize this. Yankee fans should understand this is a win now team. This is not a team that, that should win in two years. Exactly. This is a team that should win now. If they are really concerned about giving up Esteban Floriel, who's probably two years away, to win now, you got a serious issue. Simple yep. as that. There's a serious problem in New York. And in my opinion, if the Yankees don't get a catcher, a solid defensive catcher, they're, they're just going to be screwed too as well because um, I don't see Gary Sanchez – lasting a full season ca catching all of these new pitchers that the Yankees are going to obtain. Yeah, I tell you what, here, here's the risk. Uh, these, these are this team is taking many big risk and people will people will fight you. People will fight you if you talk about a Yankee player or business sense in general how how baseball business works. You know, I've I've said for a while now. We talked about it before anybody Again, uh, and, and again, people say, oh, why do you toot your own horn? Well, hell, we don't get paid for this shit, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead, and if I'm right, you better believe I'm going to say I'm right because, look, if anybody followed Twitter over the last two days, Major League Baseball writers were probably wrong a good 15 times. Exactly. I mean, easily. But if you're if you're looking at Gary Sanchez, like like me and you have talked about, we talked about a while ago the idea of maybe a real Mudo Sanchez swap. Obviously, I think both of us have agreed we probably wouldn't do that this offseason, yeah. but maybe something else to get real Mudo over here and you figure out what you do with Sanchez at that moment. Here's the risk the Yankees are taking. Do I think Gary Sanchez can improve? Yes, I think Gary Sanchez can improve. But what if, what if, Gary Sanchez maybe hits a little better, but he's still leading the league and his staff has the most wild pitches. He's still leading the league in, 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 in past balls. If this continues to be an issue, guess what? Brian Cashman, Yankees ownership, again has dropped the ball. And it's been covered very well by the media. It's been covered very well by many Yankee fans. This is no conspiracy theory. This is just bad judgment and bad management. Simple as that. I'm not saying you dump the guy down the river, but they know a lot more than we do. And if it really is an issue, it needs to be addressed. Simple as that. Hopefully he gets better. But yeah, I do agree. There should be an idea, some sort of conversation, if they really feel that Gary Sanchez isn't going to hold up as a catcher. Also, it disables... Um pictures like if they want to throw something in the ground they'll be hesitant to do so judging well, yeah. by Gary Sanchez's history you, you, you're a hundred you're, you're spot on I talked about that last year that I had somebody tell me uh and again it, it was somebody that that does mainstream reporting 
that was flat out and said that David Robertson was very concerned about throwing his breaking ball in the dirt with guys on base. Simple as that. I mean, he elevated a lot of pitches because of that. And a lot of guys did. You know, um, we were on this all season long that it was a major issue. It continued to be a major issue throughout the year to the fact that Gary Sanchez had literally the worst batting average in New York Yankee history. But yet fans and a lot of people will make you believe that he had a he had a decent year. Exactly. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about Hal, Hal Steinbrenner, and let's talk about how Yankees fans believe that they could add a Machado or Harper with Stanton on this team. I believe that the Yankees, if they have Stanton on this roster, that they cannot go after a Harper and Machado because, like I said, I think the Yankees want to stay under the luxury tax. But I do believe that if they move salary, Hal Steinbrenner and the Yankees front office, it's going to be their number one priority to go after Manny Machado and Harper because if they don't, Yankees fans are just going to revolt against Hal Steinbrenner. Oh, my God. It's it's going to be... Well, the one thing I got to admit, I think Joel Sherman, Joel Sherman, I think he just put something up not that long ago in the New York Post, was talking about really what's next for the Yankees and is it more financial constraint. So I was pretty happy to see that. But no, you know, excuse me, you are you are on on that one, and, and I agree in many ways. You know, this, this is not going to be some breaking news, what I'm about to say. Here's the deal. The Yankees are going to hope and they're going to think, again, like they did with Corbin, likely. These guys want to play for the Yankees? We're going to give you an offer. Exactly. And that is it. But let me tell you what. If you don't think, and everybody listening, if you don't think Bryce Harper is going to get a big couple of big deals out there, you're wrong. He will. He's going to get multiple large offers from multiple clubs. Same thing for Machado. They're going to get multiple offers from multiple clubs for a lot of money. If the Yankees look to lowball guys like they did with Corbin, because here's the thing too with Corbin. People go, oh no, $20 million a year was enough for him. In this market, no, it wasn't. You can't just judge That's a guy. That's an insult. That was an insult. It's an insult. It is. And, you know, I, I, I said that a couple of times because I never knew the dollar amount. Nobody ever communicated the dollar amount with me. My assumption was, you know, five years, 120 or, or so. And I, I said that countless times. But no, it, it really was. And you'll have people, again, these new age Yankee fans that'll come out and go, oh, no, that's an overpay anyway. $100 million is too much for him. All right, well, guess what? He's also the best pitcher in the market by far, by a long shot. He's the best guy and probably has the most potential to give you the best years going forward. So he was worth what he got. He was going to get a major deal. Now... When it comes to Harper, when it comes to Machado, you are you are damn right when you say the Yankees better figure out some sort of way to get one of these guys. Whether that's something like you said of, of moving, moving Stanton to get a different deal in place. Whether it's maybe giving Sonny Gray away and earning some more of that salary back and having a team pay that. Which I don't think they're going to do because I think they're going to get a pretty decent haul for Gray. And... They figure out a way to sign one of these. They have to. The Yankees, look, you remember two years ago. You remember three years ago. Everyone in baseball was talking about the 2019 free agent class. Mm -hmm. Hell, there was photoshopped on newspapers of those three <laughs> in Yankee uniforms. This was a foregone conclusion. And right now we're talking about, can the Yankees afford them? Exactly. What the hell Twilight Zone episode are we living in? Judging from last um, offseason, the free agent market, obviously these players now are going to get the best um, offers available. They're going to take the most money. Always. And I don't think, I don't think um, you know, I saw a lot of like the MLB trade rumors had, you know, their projections. I don't see Harper getting $400 million. I don't see Machado getting 380 I think they get low 300s. I think, I think there's a possibility Manny Machado gets high 200s. Because I really think his comments, they're going to use against him. And I think it's going to affect him. I think I think all the ownership, all owners that are after this guy know that it's going to affect him. And they're not, and they're going to use that against him. Um, I think Harper gets a larger deal. I think he gets probably 325, 330, 335 around there. I don't see anybody going 400, 390. I just don't. Um, I don't I think the market's possible. 
But again, we had there was reports today about the about the Dodgers that um oh man, I forgot what it was. I think Buster only talked about it or Ken Rosenthal that they want to get under the luxury tax for the next two years. Yeah. So uh, we don't know. He said he doesn't know how accurate it is, but it's been it's been rumored for a while. If that's the case, who's signing these guys? I mean, if the Yankees don't get Machado or Harper, that Stanton deal is just going to look ridiculous because Stanton. I don't. I highly doubt he's going to opt out unless he has monster years. Like a, similar to A Rod, he produced when he had that opt out. I don't see if the if Stanton doesn't produce, I don't see him opting out, and that contract is just going to look ridiculous because you passed up yeah. on twenty six year olds that have a higher ceiling, in my honest opinion. And man, that that uh, you you, ju- you just you answered everybody's question right there when it comes to what should the Yankees do with these two guys? They go after them. They're twenty six years old. 26 years old, all stars, MVP candidates. I believe Harper's case. Harper won the MVP already. I'm almost 100 percent certain. Not not seeing anything. I think he did win the MVP award. You're talking about guys that automatically improve whatever club they have gone to. They automatically make their salary back. You're gonna make tons of money off of Bryce Harper or Manny Machado being in New York. It's 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 beyond belief that we are even in an off season where we're about to enter one of the busiest times in baseball. The winter meetings start on Saturday. Quick plug for me, I'll be having multiple live chats on Saturday and Sunday. But that we're even having this conversation. And you have Yankee fans that will flat out look you in the face and go, well, they probably can't afford both of them. <laughs> I mean, and you want to laugh at these guys and say, what are you, seven? <laughs> they can't afford both of them. Well, what team are we to- Are we the Roy? Hell, if, if if I was reporting news for the Royals, I'd be the most popular guy on the planet. Exactly. I mean, it, it's a joke that we're, that we're literally having these conversations. Look, here's the deal. I like Jay Happ. Jay Happ, two years, that is it. He doesn't accept it. You move on. I like Eovaldi. Eovaldi's going to get a big deal. Look, who's attacking Michael K? Michael K said he's going to get more money than Corbin. Is he out of his mind? Christ. Yeah, I heard that. Michael K is out of his friggin' mind. <laughs> two surgeries. Yes, he had a hell of a year for the Red Sox. Great postseason. Two Tommy John surgeries. He's not going to get a six or seven year deal at 140 plus million. No way in hell. Let's talk about Yankees, the – exactly. I'll finish off real quick. I was just saying that, you know, Yankees aren't going that route. I, I love the idea of a trade with Cleveland. Open up the farm system. And, hell, look, this is not popular, but I'm going to say it because you want to know why I'm going to say it? I'm not scared to say these things, one. And, two, it's a win-now move. You got a free agent out there called Manny Machado. That's probably the best third baseman in baseball, top one or two. Get him – Trade Andujar, get your damn top starter you need to win now. Am I a fan of that move? No. But you want to win. Go out there and win. And what I was going to mention is um, the New Age Yankees, their philosophy now. Have you noticed that the front office picks, they, they pick favorites now? This fascination with Gardner, Sabathia, Hicks, etc. They're picking them yeah. over <laughs> obvious choices via the free agent market. Well, look, the Yankees leak certain things. Trust me, the Yankees leak certain things out, and, and they want news reporting to report certain things. Look at what they ba- look. Look at what a lot of the news reporters have actually believed. They believe this. They have believed that the New York Yankees would not go after Bryce Harper because they have a loaded outfield. <laughs> they That's have re- look, look. This blows my mind. They have reported this as news that they will not even talk. Hell, Joe Sherman and these guys flat out said they w- they haven't even mentioned Harper. If that's the case, everyone in Yankee ownership should lose their job. It's a joke. They're the New York Yankees. They're going to talk to every free agent out there. In my honest opinion, they are, but they're lowballing them. They're putting out numbers knowing oh, no that question. they won't accept, and <laughs> they just want to stay under the tax. No question, because look, here's the thing now. 
let's just say let, let's say worst case scenario happens and the yank and 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 Bryce Harper goes to Philadelphia let's say he goes back to the Nationals and let's say Manny Machado goes to the Phillies let's just speculate here Brian Cashman's gonna say simple as this we offered Corbin a contract somebody went somewhere else we offered Machado and Harper contracts. They went somewhere else. We value them at what we value them at. We weren't going to go further. And you'll have many fans sit there and say, that's okay. And in the media, they will say, we told you so. So it, it's very odd what's going on and what we're seeing. It, it, it's almost like you have so many people covering now for what the Yankees are doing, which to me makes no sense. I mean, projections mean a lot. And I, and I say that in all honesty because it shows where your mindset is as a fan watching baseball. Everyone's projection in 2019, a year or two ago, was that the Yankees would get, and I'm not even joking when I say this, the Yankees would get Machado and Harper. It was a foregone conclusion they would get both. It was never one or the other. It was they'll get both of them, definitely. That's the point. That's the point of the rebuild for young guys. That's the point of win now in 2019 was that this was the game plan all along. Now what it looks like more of Excuses, is that excuses, excuses. Excuses or, hey, we offered Corbin $100 million. That's a hell of a deal. He turned it down. So we look good. We went after him. We tried. We brought him to Yankee Stadium. We had the little picture set up for him. We hosted him and his wife. He met the team. He met the coaching staff. He met Sabathia. Didn't work out. Oh, what else What else could you want us to do, fan base? Exactly. We tried. That's, that's just laughable that they rolled out the supposed red carpet for Corbin, knowing that the deal that they were offering him, he would reject that. It's all a PR stunt. You know, it, it's it's funny because, again, when I when when people you know, you you know this when when people talk about oh the uh, Simonetti the Simonetti source I'm the source of everything that I that I do personally. Um, there's there's always been confusion of what exactly that is. Now people believe that, you know, I have I have people I speak to that are as good as these John Haymans and Ken Rosenthal's and all these. I get more things along the lines of that. There, there's an offer. There's this. There's that, and they go for. And you know, I report out from that on what what's there. But when I was told they had a five year deal, there was no way in my mind I ever expected a hundred million. I don't think any fan in general with any mindset of how the Yankees do business ever thought it would be a deal of a hundred million. But now we just gotta look forward and and really say well, what is next. And and look at that. I think the Yankees are just gonna look at the who who's available via trades and all this um you know smoke screen things, right? Like um offering free agents numbers that they won't accept. I think it's going to persist. Yeah, and I I mean here's what I think the next the next couple of moves are. I I think the next move is gonna be you you'll end up you'll likely see Sonny Gray go in the winter meetings. I think the Yankees played him smart the whole time, and I've said that for a while. Let Corbin come off the board, whether he goes to the Yankees or not. You know, your J-Haps are probably going to come off the board pretty quickly. I know the Phillies are also pushing for him and Keuchel. So the Phillies are going to make a splash on a starter. They're going to get one of these starting pitchers, preferably a lefty, either Hap or, or Keuchel. But you look at what the Yankees can do. They can certainly go out there and re-engage the Indians again. I'm I'm very certain they will do that. I think they will. How sure are we that the Indians will deal one of these guys? We don't know. I think Bauer's kind of taking himself off that club anyway, to be honest, with a lot of the things he says. Yeah. I think maybe it's rubbed some people wrong and maybe ownership wrong a little bit. So I think even he said recently that um, he doesn't expect himself to be in Cleveland long anyway or something along those lines. But um, and he's a picture uh, that um um just got uh, over two hundred strikeouts as well. So, oh man, I mean he's a he's a he 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 uh, he probably would have been second in Cy Young voting if he didn't get injured. Um, that's how good of a year he was really having. But I I see the Yankees doing that. I think they could bring Hat back on on a two year deal. I don't think they go three. And let me say this real quick too. 
let me just throw this out there. Not to keep bringing up Corbin. If the Yankees give Hap three years, they got no oh, excuse for what they did with Corbin. Oh, man. They'll have no excuse. You didn't want to give Corbin six years because you were worried about age 35, but you'll give a 36-year-old three years or a 35-year-old, whatever he is. So, you know, two-year deal is is really max what you do there. Early in the offseason, I said I could see like a two-year, $24 million deal. Hell, I throw that out there now and see if he bites. But I will look to the Indians. The Indians got a lot, got three guys you can get. Offer what your best package is. See what it is and, and look to make a deal like that. I can also see the Yankees adding an outfielder. I don't know if it will be Harper. I think he's the best bet for them, even more than Machado, even though I love Machado. And I still think the Yankees go out there and get a first baseman. I think they have to, and I think they will. Yeah, judging by the Yankees' moves, though, they want to keep Floreal, et cetera, because supposedly it matches up with how their salary is going to match up. You know, years under control, this guy makes this well, much. And for, in my honest opinion, if the Cleveland Indians ask for a lot, I think the Yankees would approach the Giants for Madison Bumgarner because they have yeah. shown early this offseason – that they are interested in acquiring players that would be rentals. So that doesn't yeah. sound far-fetched to me. No, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. And, and he's worth $12, 12 million dollars as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll see the Yankees' name thrown out there any any day now, especially at the winter meetings. Madison Bumgarner won't be traded before, before the winter meetings begin. If Bumgarner's traded, you'll see a lot of traction on Bumgarner when the winter meetings start. And no, you're spot on because – you know, unless a team blows the Giants away from Bumgarner, I don't see him getting the package that a lot of people think he'll get. You know, you hear yeah, people say like Andrew and things like that. Yeah, it won't be no. at the expense of dealing with the Indians. Yeah, it wouldn't be something like Kluber because people got to remember, Kluber's also signed to a good deal. So you're also getting Kluber for a couple of more years at a good salary, a very good salary. Um, same thing with Bauer, and I believe Carrasco has another year, I want to say, left. So, you know, yeah, you're right. You're you're buying. If you're going after Bumgarner, you're probably saying, look, maybe, you know, pay some of that salary down and maybe we'll give you two top prospects. In my honest opinion, we'll give you a top yeah. prospects and two low guys. Yeah, in my honest opinion, you saw all the prospects the Yankees got in 2016. They were never utilized properly. The Yankees could have gotten a certified ace with all those players they got. Well, what's the biggest name? Paxton? They got for Sheffield? That's all yeah. from the top of my head? They could have got yeah, more. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From the top guys they traded? Yeah, definitely. Um, That that one, Um, they traded, my goodness, I feel like my, uh, I'm going I'm going blind here McKinney, on this. One. My goodness. Who that? was the deal? Well, who was the deal with the White Sox? Who did they get from the White Sox? Oh, uh, Robertson, Robert uh, Frazier. Oh, Robertson, that's right. And and they traded Rutherford for that. So look at look what Can they you? got there. Yeah. And Rutherford was one of their top prospects. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, the best guy they got for their prospects so far is Paxton. Yep. And so, like, like we're saying, the Paxton is great, but the Yankees have too many question marks. He could easily go down, you know? Yeah, and I mean, you know, I, if James Paxton, like I – and this is a if you can say with every single pitcher in baseball – if James Paxton is healthy, I expect a monster year. This yeah. guy's a strikeout artist. He's a power Potential pitcher. Uh, no, he, he he's a guy that the Yankees perfect perfect addition. Clap my hands on, on to Brian Cashman. That was that was a great 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 trade. Yeah, like hopefully that. hopefully it works out. I love I love 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 that deal. You got to get somebody to compliment him. And look, Mark Feinstein today brought up Lance Lynn. Oh, if that's man. truly where the Yankees' mindset is. Excuse my language. The team's fucked. Yeah, they're in the wrong. They're in the wrong hands. I mean, I think Flat they're out. screwed. Um, I think they're screwed at the catcher position. To be honest with you, obviously they are going to go go out and get pictures. But if they go into the season with Gary Sanchez as their full season catcher, I mean, wow. Well, well, the other thing too, I mean, that a lot of people aren't talking about right now. And and I talked about it because I really thought, obviously, the Yankees were going to get Corbin, and I kept saying. My concern with a guy like Corbin that throws 48% ground balls, look at that infield. That yep. infield's a train wreck. Who's yep. a good defender in the infield? Nobody Can but you Greg Bird, and we don't know if he's going to get that uh, starting gig. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you really look at it right now, if you, re if you look at what they're doing, 
there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this team. Look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big Luke Voigt believer. I think Luke Voigt could be very good. I think Luke Voigt could get many at bats at DH and at first base. I think he could fill many at bats in the DH spot and in the first base spot and switch on and off in that type of role. There's no way the Yankees should ever think of passing up on a name like Goldschmidt if he doesn't go to St. Louis. I know the Yankees have been talking to Arizona. They always talk to Arizona because they're one of their regular trading partners. So that would definitely make sense to, to, to look at him. Um, they've been talking talking about him. I expect that to pick up if something falls through with St. Louis. But St. Louis, again, has so many good starters that they can really get almost anybody they want because if they're willing to deal them. But overall, I mean, the infield right now is so poor. Um, I talked about a guy like Daniel Murphy, but he doesn't help you on defense. Yeah. I just feel his bat is great for the Yankees, and they should definitely consider that. And I think he'll be one of those guys that's more of a late pickup for some guys. But, I mean, they got Paxton. Great. What are the next moves? What are they going to do to address some of the other issues? They still got issues in the bullpen. I still think they, they, they don't have to really allocate a lot of money to the bullpen because I think they can still – piece together. They got some young guys that throw very hard and they can really piece together a solid pen. I think they go after Adovino. I think they, they potentially look to get Miller on a, on a smaller contract. I don't think that's going to happen though. But um, overall, they, they still have work to do and right now they just got Paxton, understandable, still early. But it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see how Cashman fills out the rest of the, uh, rest of the, the roster. Yep, and um, you mentioned uh, DH. DH. Um saying that uh, Luke Voigt would be great platooning at DH, but <laughs> we have a player that really, in total, he's going to be making $32 million per season, and he's occupying that position. This is why I think the Yankees are handicapped at DH. Yeah, and I mean, the the, the other thing, too, that I, I laugh about is that Brett Gardner shouldn't be taking at bats away from anybody. I'm not knocking Brett Gardner. I like Brett Gardner. Brett Gardner might be one of the best fourth outfields you'll ever find. But I just answered what he is. He's a fourth outfielder. If Brett Gardner is taking at bats and making Stanton a DH, the Yankees yeah, got something ridiculous. seriously wrong with their head. Yeah. If you're going to go ahead and say, well, Stanton's going to DH, uh, uh, Gardner's going to play four out of every seven games, what are you doing? If you get a first baseman, are you just going to bench Luke Voigt, maybe play him against a lefty every now and then because Brett Gardner's in left field? This is a problem. These are problems. These are severe problems. Are the Yankees really banking, possibly, on 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 uh, 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 comeback seasons from guys like Greg Bird, maybe a healthy Clint Frazier? Are they really going to put a team that has the very real potential – to win the World Series in the hands of unknowns. Exactly. Doesn't make doesn't make sense. So in these closing segments, um, where do you see the Yankees going? Uh, future moves. Um, let's talk about where you see them specifically via trade, free agency, etc. Yeah, well, I mean, let's let's look at it through the through what we know, and that's not doing you know. Too, too much speculation. I think Hap makes sense. A lot of people don't like Jay Hap. I like Jay Hap on a two year deal. I would be okay with Jay Hap on a two year deal. Then you're looking at a rotation. You know, you got a, you could, you could go a couple of different ways. I'm a fan of splitting up the lefties. So for me personally, I'd go Paxton, Severino, Hap, Tanaka, Sabathia. You still got a very, very solid rotation. Is it as sexy as it would be with Corbin? No. But can Jay Happ have a very good year again? Yes, I definitely think Jay Happ could. I think he have two good years. Not a fan of three years, and personally, I try to figure out my rotation somewhere else if he wanted three years, and I don't go after him. I think somebody's going to overpay for Happ, to be honest with you. I think he's I do, I do. I, I, I agree. I, I think somebody's going to give him the third year. I don't think it's the Yankees, and I tell you what, again, I, I don't want to keep going back to this, but if it's the Yankees and they give him three years – they, they got even more to answer for for what happened <laughs> with Corbin. Makes, makes no no friggin' sense at all. When it comes to the trade route, I think the Indians make the most sense. I think they trade Sonny Gray. I, again, I, I, I've been talking about Gray since last uh, deadline. 
talked about Gray in November. I have a video out there where it was the same one when I said Sabathia had the eight-year deal on the table. It's up to him to accept. I flat out say in that video that the main suitors are, you know, your your Reds, your Brewers, uh, the Padres, the 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 and uh, the Oakland. I think one of those teams give the Yankees a pretty significant deal. Um, potentially, do the Yankees flip maybe one of those prospects they get to move to Cleveland? Um, there's there's many different ways they can still go. Do the Yankees now look at a Marwin Gonzalez to fill one of those infield roles? Now that now that you know they, they've lost that money on Corbin, and let's not forget that. Don't let the Yankees off the hook. As a fan, just like how people have to hold government accountable, exactly. as fans, we should hold our team that we love and pay money for accountable. They just saved money. Let's not forget that. All of our projections we put together when it comes to Yankee payroll was including about $20 million on Patrick Corbin and about a hundred or so million dollar commitment. That is now gone. What do the Yankees do to fill that commitment? You can get – look, if you want to look past a guy like Murphy – I mean, excuse me, if you want to look past a Machado and a Harper, you can say, well, they can probably in $100 million fit Marwin Gonzalez, Daniel Murphy, and Jay Happ and probably get those guys for maybe, what, 110, 115 combined? Yep. Those are three players that would that would greatly benefit your ball club. But to be honest with you, if the Mets get uh, JT Riamuto, considering uh, comparing the Yankees farm system to the Mets, that's just going to make uh, Cashman look ridiculous, in my honest opinion. Well, I- I've said it, and, I- and I've-, I've battled people about it, and I've asked people if, they- if they're if they we're very willing and able, we can have a live uh, debate about it. I'm never concerned about a debate because when I speak things, I speak it, I speak it truthfully. If I'm wrong, I tell you I'm wrong. Brian Cashman may be the most overrated general manager in baseball. Simple as that. Simple as that. Dave Dombrowski took over the Boston Red Sox. And Dave Dombrowski said, oh, great, we have a good farm system. You know what he did when he had a core? He traded for guys that would win a World Series. Guess what the Red Sox did? They won a World Series. When they won the World Series, I had a live chat that night. And I said, you can't be mad at the Boston Red Sox. They did what they were supposed to do for a team that wants to win. The Yankees have continued to miss out on aces. And now, you were right on on Verlander. A lot of us Yankee fans, including myself, will sit here and say, nobody expected what happened with Verlander. But here's the thing. Maybe we didn't expect that. But advanced scouting, pro scouts, these guys should have had some sort of idea that maybe something was off. Maybe he wasn't throwing as much breaking balls or as much fastballs that would help him better. That's what the Astros do. They had him started throwing a lot more breaking pitches, and he became the guy again. So to let to let ownership off the hook for now missing out on Corbin, missing out on Cole – I don't want to throw Otani in there. That's not really fair. Yeah. But missing out on, on on the guys they missed out. Hell, somebody told me today, well, they weren't ready to get Max Scherzer yet. <laughs> was Max Scherzer 35 years old? Exactly. I'm pretty sure Max Scherzer was like 27 or 28 when he signed that deal. So were the Yankees just not expecting to win in that time frame? That's a poor excuse. Yep. So, I mean, I I see them doing multiple different things. I just hope – I hope in this regard I'm wrong and the Yankees go out there and make some good moves. Um, I want to be wrong on this one. I'm just very, very concerned as a Yankee fan and then the things that I hear on a report on that just do not add up when it comes to how the Yankees typically do business. And you've been spot on this for weeks now saying that you personally feel that the Yankees will have to move Stanton to get one of these guys. Yeah, and yeah. Um, in my honest opinion, like I'm not trying to bash Yankees fans, if Yankees fans think that the Yankees could obtain Harper or Machado with Stanton on this team, I'm sorry to say, people are highly delusional 
if they think uh, that could happen. Well, it's it's like you've been saying. I mean, all you got to do is follow what's been going on. Yeah. I mean, if you see what happened today with Corbin, hell, look, I'll bring it up again. Uh, Brian Brian Hoke is around the New York Yankees all the time. I talk to Brian Hoke a lot. I asked Brian Hoke today. I said flat out, "What is your reaction to this?" And we talked about this deal. We, me, and him were both in agreement. There's there's no doubt the Yankees don't get Corbin anyway. Brian Hoke flat out said, there is no way in the world the Yankees expected Corbin to accept that deal. If that doesn't tell you enough, I don't know what does. Simple as that. Exactly. And that let's tell, tells you everything yeah. you need to know. And let's tell everybody out there who your source is. The source of the Salmonetti source is Julian Assange of WikiLeaks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> They've been a main source for many, Bro, many years of mine. Russian collusion. Well, it's it's funny. I, I hear I hear it a lot. Well, name your source. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey uh, Jeffrey Wanabaker. <laughs> uh, what do, what do, what do they, what is the response to that? You know I, mean, I mean, the way the Yankees are operating, even if you have the best source out there, they're not letting anything out. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me let me let me say this too, real quick. You're 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 100 right. Who who had when the the money finally came out? Nobody reported that before. Nobody did. Nobody knew. Nobody had a, had a sense. The common the common idea around Major League Baseball and anybody you spoke to was that the Yankees would probably do a five- or six-year deal at about 124, 125. When it came out today, I was on my live chat during it, and somebody goes, hey, Pete, John Heyman's reporting the Yankees went 5-100. My mouth dropped. I said, wait a <laughs> second, you're, you're joking. And they go, no. And I had a few of my regulars go, no, he's, he's, he's right. He, he reported five years, 100 million. I said to myself right on the middle of that chat, the Yankees, this this wasn't a fair deal. This was a joke. Yep. This this to me was like you said, like we both said earlier. We offered him a contract. He said no. We did our job. Yep. It's practically to get Yankees fans to shut up. Basically, that's how I feel. I mean, I I, I feel that way. I really do. And you'll have a lot of people get upset about us saying that. But hey, one thing about me and you, I can honestly care less. Um, I mean, we put we obviously put our feet to the fire. We say things that, when we say it at the moment, it's not very popular. But when weeks pass, I mean, we get proven right all the time. I mean, it's a regular, it's a regular, consistent thing. And I mean, God, if you you want to bring up you want to bring up mainstream reporting, right? Let's bring up mainstream reporting. Horrible. They're, I they're have been a lot on of Twitter. Right, I'm wrong. Oh man, I haven't been on Twitter a lot recently because you know I have a lot of different things I'm doing and whatnot. So there's some times where I go, you know, maybe a two or three or four hour time frame without really checking much. But I remember just the other day with the Diaz deal. Who reported this guy was going there? Who retracted it? Who came out and said this guy's going this one? This other one says he's not going there. This one says he's going there. This one says they're eating sixty million of the contract. Then it comes out of twenty five million. It's an abs. It's it's hilarious sometimes when I when I hear things along the lines of "Oh, Simonetti said it's guaranteed." My opinion was that it was guaranteed that Corbin was going to be a Yankee. I never specifically said confirmed Corbin to the Yankees. Uh, you know, what pending approval, um, like we did with Stanton, like we did with Sabathia, like we did with. Countless trades that happened, uh, countless different moves that that were made, where it was to the Yankees, you know, if within the next day or within the next twenty four hours, um, these these guys consistently get things wrong, but you know, it doesn't seem like their newspaper, their owners, whoever are, are paying their checks, really hold them accountable for those things. So it's very easy to throw whatever the hell you want out there and make something stick. Exactly. Have you noticed that the Yes Network uh, announcers, whatever crew, they get stuff more, they make more sense than the Yankees front office. You see, you hear people like Jack Curry, oh, Corbin is the guy to get, give him whatever. 
this and that. Oh, I, I love I love Jack Curry. I absolutely I absolutely love Jack Curry. I mean, I was hearing him just just yesterday. I was hearing him. Jack Curry, like that's what I said. You know, even even the, said, even the Yes Network was pushing Verlander. Oh man, I, I remember. I remember you telling me about that, and I remember seeing things about. it. I was like, oh no, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that personally. Um, but no, you're you're 100 right. Just as just yesterday and the and the last last Monday. Um, or whatever it was, there was two hot stove shows. I forgot the days they are. I think maybe Thursday and Monday. But I remember Jack Curry on the last show and then yesterday's show, and even John Flaherty. They both said it flat out. Corbin, they cannot see Corbin going anywhere else. It's a, it, it seems like it's the perfect marriage. He's going to be a Yankee. Uh, it just depends on what the you know what the money looks like. Now, Curry brought up something that I've been talking about for a while. And I was happy he brought it up because I feel like it, it just makes too much sense not to happen. And he brought up the other day about Daniel Murphy. And he said that he feels like Murphy's a guy that would make a ton of sense. But you're right. I mean, if you look at a lot of the moves that have happened, I feel like the Yes Network guys are kind of like how us normal fans are who remember yeah. how the Yankees usually are. And they just report accurate stuff because it makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And the Yankees have been the ones that you kind of scratch your head about and go, well, really, what were they thinking here? <laughs> I mean, obviously very, very nothing odd. because the track record proves that they gave up on Cole, gave up on all these other pitchers, so um, they make absolutely zero sense. Yeah, and I mean, hey, look. With no I results, wrong, actually, because they haven't won the World Series. Yeah, and I mean, look, if I was wrong on Sonny Gray – I can admit right now that I was wrong, but guess what? I'm also not in not in charge of scouting. I'm also not in charge of advanced uh, metrics and all these analytics that they talk about. I'm not involved in all of that stuff. Brian Cashin makes a final say on those calls, and sometimes you got to just say, "I've been wrong. I, I I I've I've made a lot of moves. Yes, some of them good, but I made a countless moves towards the pitching staff that has really not helped this team." When it comes down to it, he's choosing prospects over MLB ready talent. And then they're using the analytic excuse to not go after this MLB ready talent. But then again, they're hoping these prospects deliver on what yeah, they're Yeah, I mean that for. that's something I talked about for a while and and all of a sudden you and you you probably remember this by, you know, my videos during the during around, around the time of the deadline last year when I had everybody messaging me. When is Justice Sheffield coming up? When is Sheffield coming up? When is Sheffield coming up? Everything you hear about Justice Sheffield is that he's not ready, that he wasn't ready, that the Yankees were very hesitant about him. They got him in the deal as a top guy. They thought he would develop more in AAA, and he never did. Now you see he's gone. But again, you know, th these are the things that we're seeing a lot now from these Yankees. And the way that I answer a lot of Yankee fans when it talks about, oh, but – you know, some guys we do have to hold on to. Okay, let me name you let me name you some of those guys that we gotta hold on to real quick. Aaron Judge, Luis Severino, um uh, Gary Sanchez, if you wanna hold hold on to him. Uh Torres. your your exact all your young guys that are already doing it at the major league level. Your core is at the major league level. Why do you feel that you must hold out on guys that can help you win a World Series. Why are you holding out on those guys now to win a World Series with a team that has a chance to do it for multiple years going forward? It doesn't make logical sense. Even, even in a business sense, even in a business sense, if you want to talk about money, it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just odd. Yep. So this has been really an hour of the Salmonetti Source. You can check them out. Obviously, everybody knows your location now. The Salmonetti Source on Twitter. You want to plug anything else? Uh, Live chats? No. Um, I think my next – unless something breaks before Saturday, I'll have my live chats – Multiple live chats likely on Saturday and Sunday, likely one to recap on Monday night. Uh, but other than that, no, that's it for me. This has been the Salmon Source. Great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.